Hey, everybody. Thanks again for joining us for another episode of Dad Deleted. And uh, if you would, uh, again, freely admit, I feel silly doing this. At the same time, uh, YouTube's got algorithms, and we want to try and get this to the broadest audience possible. So if you wouldn't mind uh, clicking like, and uh, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to the channel, um, nobody's going to come get you. It's not like you're breaking curfew or quarantine or anything. But if you would, I would sure appreciate it. Um, I know that this uh, channel is not uh, as upbeat as uh, a lot of the ones that you might watch on YouTube. They're dealing with uh, lighter subjects. I know the stuff I like personally is about cars and sometimes politics and um, stuff like that. So uh, it's a little more fun, you know. They can do the, uh, you know, they can do the radio voice. Hey, how you doing? You know, and they can be very upbeat. This it, it would sound weird if I was very super positive and super excited and upbeat about this when it's really a pretty depressing subject. And I know the people that a lot of the people that are watching this are struggling. And so it, it just, it's one of those things that just, uh, doesn't fit. So, um, but I appreciate you listening anyway. Eventually, uh, this will get, uh, to be uh, watchable and, uh, I'm sure it's only going to take two or three years to get there. Uh, so the few of you that, uh, are diehard enough to, uh, stick with me, God bless you. One of these days you're going to be impressed. Probably not, but hey, a lot of myself. So uh, today we're going to talk about some things that were happening in uh, latter 2013 and, and uh, mostly in the spring of 2014. Um, and really, instead of trying to focus on blocks of time, I, I want to look at blocks of time and see what were the key, uh, what, what, what were the, uh, I guess, the key uh, takeaways right from those times. What, were, what, what was going on in those times? Uh, what were clues? What were uh, situations that were going on where um, you could see the alienation happening? And so we'll talk more about that. And hopefully it'll be a situation where you can see um, parallels. And again, if you see these parallels and you're not sure if you're being alienated, uh, these are going to be clues to you. And if you know already you're being alienated, then maybe these are things that you can bring up to your attorney or to your, uh, if you've got um, a mental health professional that's been uh, retained by the court, um, these are things that you can bring up uh, to them. So uh, one of the things I would say, uh, and I was thinking about this, this is a struggle. I, I am now... You, you know, I mean, it's not like it was a thousand years ago, um, but it, it, it's been six, seven months since uh, our ordeal ended, and we're not dealing with it on a daily basis anymore. And so I, I do have a little bit of um, free, uh, you know, runway behind me. And um, so it's not too, it's not as raw. As it was, unless I happen to run across a picture of my kids and me uh, that I'm not looking for, uh, and it takes me by surprise, and that 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 still stings. Or if I talk to somebody, um, and I've got to kind of explain what's going on, um, then again, that's that's when it kind of floods back. But I know for a lot of you that are watching this. Um, you're dealing with it. You're in the middle of it. And the one thing I would just say to you is that I can tell you from personal experience, there are going to be times when you are struggling to the point where you want to give up. And if we're being just very honest, you, you may even want to give up entirely. And I, you know, I'm talking about suicide. Um, and that's something that people don't want to talk about. And I'm quite certain that the people that do commit suicide uh, because of stuff like this, I, I really wonder if, if uh, you know, they 
people talk about crying for help, but I think the people that truly are struggling mightily with suicide, I think that they mostly keep it to themselves and it comes as a shock that they uh, took that last step, that they, 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 uh, they chose that, that final uh, solution to that temporary problem. Um, but here's what I would say. The one chance, no matter how bad things are with you and your kids, uh, with alienation, uh, even if they're young, um, the one chance that you definitely have, and again, it's not a guarantee, but it's a chance, is that when they get older and they're out from under the thumb of mom or dad, uh, whomever is doing the alienating, there is a chance, whether it's great or slight, I can't say, but there is a chance that, that, that your child may one day wake up and say, wait a minute, this doesn't add up. And maybe it'll be something where um, the alienating parent uh, starts alienating your fiancé from you or your girlfriend or your boyfriend um, or your wife or your, uh, your, you know, your husband. Um, and you're going to start to see a pattern again, the same pattern. And, or you'll see them do it with, with someone else. They'll, they'll carve someone else out of your life, their life, for what you're going to be at that point. Uh, you're going to be quite certain that, that uh, the punishment doesn't fit the crime. And it may, uh, it may cause them to snap out of it. It may cause them to question, wait a minute. Is this what mom did to dad? Is this what dad did to mom? And so you do have some chance uh, that maybe in the future as an adult, they reach back out to you. And they can't do that if you're not around. And by the way, not just around, but take care of yourself. Uh, I can tell you from experience, um, my wife and I, we went through many, many years of this. And, and we talked about it uh, in that last year um, and we definitely talked about it once it was over, but our estimate was, and this is not, uh, hyperbole. We believe that probably about 80 to 85% of our conversations, the words we used with each other on a daily basis, um, had to do with alienation or the kids or, the, or fighting the kids or struggling with the kids behavior uh, based on the alienation, but it, or, or dealing with um, attorneys, attorneys wanting money, attorneys, um, you know, doing a better job or not so good of a job. But but the baseline of it is is that everything uh, it, it becomes a black hole for your emotions, for your uh, for your, for your thoughts, for your words. For your actions, it just will suck up every ounce of energy. It will, uh, there, you know, um, there's the old saying, "Nature abhors a vacuum," right? Well, I, I can promise you, alienation will take care of any sort of free time that you have, any sort of free thoughts, enjoyable thoughts. I, there will be no room for that. I can guarantee you. Um, so you have to be mindful. And by the way, I'm not even telling you that it's possible to not let it take over your life. Um, but if at all possible, don't let it take over your life. You've got to have some healthy balance. Uh, so um, I can tell you, even when we were going through this, my wife and I still took time for each other uh, as much as possible. And I can tell you, once it was over, we took a lot of time. We've been, we've taken a lot of uh, vacations, just she and I. And again, I know we're in a position to be able to do that. Again, I'm not rich. We're not rich. We're not poor, but we're not rich. Uh, but I can tell you that for our mental health, it was important that we reconnect after this. So I can tell you, stay connected in the middle of this because this person they're going to be your greatest advocate and they're your, your best friend. And, and I'm telling you, there are going to be days when your spouse, the step parent is going to be struggling and it's understandable because it's not their kids and they don't have that natural love, that natural affinity for these uh, kids that you do. And your kids are going to do some horrible things. They're going to say horrible things and you can't blame them for it. It's not their fault, 
um, but it's not going to hurt any less, and it's not going to make your 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 spouse uh, any less hurt. So you're going to have to deal with it. But you're going to have to be strong for them sometimes, and they're going to have to be strong for you sometimes. So you you can't ignore that relationship. So that's the first uh, thing I would say today: is make sure that you do not forget that relationship because for you to end up uh, struggling, you know, if you've remarried. Um, that I, I'm telling you, the alienating parent, they're not going to be disappointed if you get divorced. But they'll see that as a victory. And it is, because now you're introducing in more uh, confusion, you're introducing in more chaos uh, to the situation. That's just one less uh, thing. It's one more thing against you. One more thing that you've got to deal with. And, and you know, they're, they're just trying to get you to quit wave the white flag of surrender. So um, so today we're going to talk about uh, three things very quickly. I'm going to try, again, try and keep these to 20 to 24 minutes. Um, so in looking at what was going on, I want to talk about, um, number one, just dealing with the alienating uh, parent in, in, in general, just trying to co-parent with them. Number two, uh, I'm going to talk about some uh, issues on the phone that came up with myself and my kids um, in 2013, but really in 2014, I started questioning mom about it and asking her what's going on. Um, and so, and then we'll um, then we'll talk in another episode. We'll talk about uh, some other. Uh, other things that were happening in early 2014. And one of those things is I changed jobs. And uh, this is the first time that um, I got accused of uh, being in contempt of uh, the court order for uh, our, our divorce order. And uh, she actually did file a motion. She never went through with it. And we'll talk about why um, she was wrong. And she, I mean, she's either, you know, um, again, the folks that are doing this, again, we've talked about this. You're dealing with a personality disorder, borderline personality disorder, narcissistic personality disorder. Um, the, the thing is, is ironically, uh, they both are seated in the same place, but, but it's almost like they, they circumvent the globe uh, in opposite directions to get to the same place, right? So the narcissist believes they're in the, the center of the world, um, the borderline personality disorder person is a victim and you are uh, out to, to get them. And, um, so anyway, so, uh, first of all, in early 2014, tr I'm trying to set up a family vacation for, uh, for the entire family. So that's, that's, uh, uh, kids and us and so I reach out in January of 2014 in a naive effort to co-parent and to try and get things worked out because I'm, I'm trying to get uh, these, these, these uh, plans done that require about uh, six months of advance notice because we've got to get reservations that are very difficult to get and we've got to book it uh, very early to make sure we have what we want. And so to do that... I said, hey, look, um, here, here are my thoughts. And, it can, and the reason I did that is because uh, I got 42 days. Because we lived more than 100 miles apart, I remember this is a Texas order, I can maximize 42 days uh, of summer extended uh, custody time, which I always did. And, but in the, in the midst of that time, uh, she gets two weekends. And so if she is strategic about those weekends she could destroy uh, vacation plans, um, and which is she did that twice, and we'll talk about that. Um, but this is one of those times, and so she basically wouldn't work with me up front. She said, well, if, I'll tell you what, if you'll promise me that uh, the kids can go to the summer camp, and again, an uh, upcoming episode, we're going to talk about stepdad in some detail um, because he plays heavily into this, uh, and there's a huge religious aspect to the alienation, uh, legalistic, old school, very fundamentalist, um, you know, stuff. So, um, 
So anyway, we'll talk about that in detail then. But uh, she basically said, hey, look, there's this uh, this uh, this uh, church camp I want them to go to. And I even agreed. I said, fine, I'll delay picking up the kids uh, until after the camp, and then I'll start my summer, and then that way the kids can go to camp. And, um, you know, it's a win-win. But here's the other thing. In the way the order, the way the standard order is in Texas read is that the, the non-custodial parent, which in this case was myself, I get to choose my time, my 42 days of the summer, and I can break it up into two sessions. Um, and, um, but I get the first choice, as you can imagine, because she's got the kids about 70 to 74, 75% of the time, right? Because I just get every other weekend. And so they give the non-custodial parent first dibs on summer vacation. And it says in there that if it's possible, so once the non-custodial parent picks his, his or her time, um, then if it's possible, then, then the other parent can exercise 21 days in a row of, of, uh, of uh, custody time. But it's, it's not a shall, it's not a must. It's a, look, if it works out, this is what can happen. And if it doesn't work out, so be it. Um, but she took that to me when it read in there that, oh, she could get 21 days. In her mind, uh, again, we had this fight every summer uh, until till we changed, you know, till we went to 50-50 in 2016. We had this fight every summer where she... Uh, said, you, you are violating the court order because you are not giving me my 21 days in a row. And no matter how many times I tried to explain to her that that's not really how it worked, and if she would read the, the orders, you know, you, she would see. And I just said, look, go talk to your attorney. Uh, but it, it didn't matter. And, and so that's what you're going to deal with. When you're dealing with someone who is alienating, you are not dealing with a rational person. You're not dealing with someone who, uh, you know, who deals with the truth. These days and times, you hear this a lot. Well, uh, this is my truth, right? And that's bull. So let's just stop right there. Stop. And this is, I'm going to get on my soapbox for a, for a minute. If I hear a person say, well, this is my truth. Uh, shut up. Shut up. There is no your truth. There is the truth, and then there are opinions, there are facts, but there is no your truth. There is the truth. You may, your truth may be the truth. Your truth may also just be your opinion. So quit trying to pass it off as that, okay? And if you're a parent, definitely stop that nonsense, but again, you're not dealing with a rational person. I can't have a conversation with a person who's living on a different planet and have them understand what we're talking about. Th th this, is, this is about, this is like a horse with blinders on. They only see what they want to see. They see what's right in front of them, what they put in front of themselves, and there is no convincing them otherwise. So you want another mental health uh, piece of advice, just stop. Don't argue with them. Don't try and convince them. I don't care how logical you are. I don't care how rational you are. Save your breath. If it's important, take it to court. Get a third party. Get a judge to deal with it if it's that important. And honestly, if it's not that important, just let it go. Because, you're, uh, you know, look, I'm not saying you can't document it, but I'm saying don't right fight it. Do not sit there and try and justify, and I don't care how justified you are, let it go. You are barking up a tree that you will never, ever climb. So, um, second thing is, uh, so, so anyway, uh, she, she interfered with that. Uh, I had to schedule, and sure enough, she scheduled her, her weekend, uh, even though she knew six uh, months in advance, uh, or excuse me, by the time I told her it was, it was, I, I get to set mine first. So it's, uh, I guess in it's April. And then about a month later, she gets to tell, she tells me when she's taking it. And of course, um, she takes her time. She takes a weekend, uh, during our vacation. 
and we have to cut the vacation short. It's a nightmare. So anyway, looking back, I shouldn't have come back because um, I think I was I think I was justified, but I was so terrified of violating a court order, I didn't want to do it. And I, and I would tell you that generally speaking, unless your attorney specifically tells you to violate a court order, do not violate court orders. Again, remember what we talked about early on in this thing. You want the you want the chasm between their behavior and your behavior to be as wide as possible. If you're both violating court orders, if you're both being seen as being unreasonable, irrational, the judge is just going to flip a coin. He's not going to know. But if you set yourself up to be the person who's doing the right thing, trying to do the right thing, and who's not violating court orders and who is not being unreasonable and irrational, then he's got to or she, has got a clearer idea uh, of who's in the right and who's in the wrong. Um, so uh, last thing we'll talk about today uh, on this episode is uh, the phone issues. So or, uh, late 2013, early 14, all of a sudden when I would uh, try and call my kids, uh, only one of my kids, so I had three kids, and only one of my kids would get on the phone at one time are on each day's call, right? Um, and they and only would say hello, goodbye. I mean, literally 30 seconds uh, of talk time. You know, it's like, hey, how's your... I don't want to talk. And that's what they would all say. Hey, I don't want to talk. And they'd stop saying, oh, by the way, at this point, uh, they'd started... Uh, some of my kids had stopped saying, uh, I love you. That's another one. And your kids stop saying, I love you. That's kind of going along with, um, and, and by the way, I, I, when I say they all did it, they all did it at the same time. I, I, I should, I, you know, when I said, every once in a while they would catch them, my, especially my middle son, who's my tenderhearted son, he would still say it every once in a while. But for the most part, they were all in lockstep. And, and that's a clue. If you have more than one child, if you have two, three kids, and they all do things together, and they're especially if they're young. I'm not talking about kids who are 16, 17 years old. I'm talking about nine years old, seven years old, four years old. When those young kids are all in lockstep, I'm, I'm here to tell you, you may have that parent tell you, oh, it's their decision. And that's what she said. Uh, that's what mom said on this. Uh, I said, hey, um, why, 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 why am I only able to talk to one, one of the kids when I call? Well, they decided. The kids decided that they just wanted to do one at a time. Uh, it, and it was their idea. But she said, before, seeing this, before you go and say that, that uh, this was something that I was doing, this was their idea. So my nine-year-old, my seven-year-old, and my four-year-old, they had a meeting. And again, as far as I know, my kids are so smart and so organized. For all I know, they were involved with the Russians uh, to hack the 2016 election. And, and for all I know, they're, they're well on their way to hacking the 2020 election. Uh, I mean, I, I have, I mean, who knows? They're working for the NSA, CIA. I have no idea. But apparently, uh, they are well organized, and they are cooking, man. So, uh, again, watch for that. Watch for when the parent says, oh, this is their idea. I didn't have anything to do with it. And, or I gave them a choice. Uh, because that's the next one. Like uh, I would call sometimes, and, and I would say, "Well, you know, hey, the, well, the kids don't want to talk," uh, and and she would say, I, "I reminded them, I told them that they're supposed to talk to you, but it was their choice. They said they didn't want to talk." Do you ever give kids choices when it comes to what time they go to bed, what they eat for breakfast, whether or not they go to school, whether or not they go to church? So another big clue when you see. The parent say that the, well, it was the child's choice, but they don't get choices in everything. They only get choices when it comes to the stuff that has to do with you. Boy, that's a huge red flag. I mean, that's a red flag flying over, you know, China. So, so anyway, um, and then lastly, there was another situation early 2014. I'd called, left a voicemail trying to talk to kids. And in the voicemail, I made the mistake of saying, well, you know, if I don't hear back from them in 10 minutes or so, I'll call back. Well, um, 
I didn't get a phone call back and I'd got busy and I didn't call back. And so that night I sent uh, an email and said, Hey, I didn't hear back from the kids. I called, didn't hear back from the kids. She sent me an email back and said, well, you said you were going to call back in 10 minutes if you, if we didn't, if they didn't call you. So, and you didn't call. So, you know, gotcha. Uh, that legalism, they're going to, they're going to, Rely exactly on your words. Oh, you said you were going to call back. You didn't call back. Therefore, I'm off the hook to have the kids call you. So, again, another red flag when they start saying, well, you said very specifically you were going to call back. You didn't call back. So, I'm, you know, I'm under no ob obligation to have the kids call you. Um, and we'll get more into some conversations about the kids uh, and phone calls and stuff like that. There's a man. There's so much to unpack. Big corporate word. Love that corporate word. No, I don't. Um, but but yeah, there's so much, so much um, to deal with. Um, so anyway, that's where we're going to end it uh, for this episode. Again, like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Um, God bless you guys if you're going through this, and if you're just here for an education, then good. If you know any attorneys who are family law attorneys or family law judges, please direct them here. These are the folks that I really want to reach um, above all else because I, I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that, a, a, that a family court judge or a family court attorney uh, tunes in, listens, listens to some of the stuff and says, well, wait a minute, I've seen some of this stuff and I thought it was this, or I thought it was not that big of a deal, but it turns out there, there's uh, much more here under the surface. And so um, maybe it protects or saves, or at, or at least it causes a judge to have just a split second of a thought about, well, maybe I need to get somebody else involved in this to have another set of eyes. So anyway, thank you so much. God bless you guys. And remember, above all else, Love your kids.